Let's go. Good morning. Here we go. Let's get mobile. Pass throughs. Press that band up. Pull all the way through. Good stuff. Try to keep your lower body checked in, meaning glutes are tight. All right, guys, once you get 10, we're going to do a little alternating or a halo. So pull that band apart on an angle. Now you're going to go one shoulder at a time, really trying to increase that range of motion. Big, gigantic 360 on that shoulder joint. Ideally, pulling that band apart, trying to keep those arms straight and letting all that stretch happen in your shoulder joint. And maybe your biceps. Let's do five each of those. All right, once you get five. You're a good host. I'm trying, <laughs> just to, you know, we have company. Yeah, right. All right, uh, first up, let's fold over at our waist, walk ourselves out to a high plank position. We're gonna do a little pigeon, but before we do a pigeon stretch, let's just get those shoulders a little bit more loosened up and the core a little bit more fired up, I should say. So squeeze the glutes, keep that trunk nice and tight, and then just do big, gigantic circles, pushing the shoulders past the fingertips in each direction, starting at your right pinky, ring finger, middle finger, pointer finger, thumb, and then up to the other hand, and then back around. Really pushing the limits and trying to get those wrists loosened up. At the same time, we're being efficient and the core is getting warmed up. Two or three circles each side, each direction, I should say. Once you're done with that, come back to center, push your hips back, do a little pike or down dog, as the yogi say. Try to press the hands into the floor, bring the chest closer to the thighs, try to bring the heels closer to the floor. Take a few deep breaths here. Press that left hand into the floor, right hand into the floor, and then bring that right leg up and back over to the left side. Really try to press that right hand in and open up that right side. And then bring the knee in toward the nose and then drop that hip down. Settle into a nice patient stretch. I always need to manually kind of move that leg. It just doesn't go there naturally for me. But need to pull that ankle up so your ankle and knee are basically parallel with your shoulders if possible and then inch that back leg further back before you surrender into that kneeling or elbow position keep your chest up chin up just do a little a couple cat cows actually with that chest up hands tightening on the floor so you're still moving those hips a little bit you're not just surrendering to it just yet. I always feel I feel it more in my hips when I keep my hands up and then when I go to that elbow position I feel it more in my lower back, me personally. So both work, both are necessary and useful. Two deep breaths here. Then you can surrender, go back down to those elbows. A cat cow in this position really. Keep your elbows down, hips are back. And try to lift your shoulders up, head up, look back, look behind you if you can. Hard for me, right? I mean like literally trying to get the eyes to go up toward the ceiling, lifting the rib cage up, and then surrendering to it. Taking the hips out of the cat cow basically. Alright, hands planted down, let's get back into that pike position. Center up, just get a little pedal of those heels, trying to touch the floor, and then plant those hands into the floor, lift the left leg up and around to the right side. Stretch that left, left side body out, and bring the knee in toward the nose, drop the foot. This is your broga for the day, oh really? <laughs> Working out, Michelle? Yeah, good stuff. What kind of stuff? Awesome. I mean, 
second day of the week. Five strength training days. Awesome. Try to bring that back leg foot further back and then drop the shoelaces to the ground if you can. So lift it. There you go. Perfect. Just stay here for a few breaths. Make sure you're feeling the stretch, not just sitting in that position. After a few breaths, come back to center and then walk yourself all the way back up to a standing position. Roll yourself up one more break. You got time to a standing position. So it's going to be 15 minutes, as many rounds as possible, for exercises. Your first exercise, the walkout. Holding over at your waist, trying to keep those legs straight, and walking yourself out to a high plank position. And then walking yourself back, trying to keep those legs straight. Use your hips as a hinge. Cool? Next up, band, pull apart. Grab that band you just used, squeeze your glutes, keep your butt tucked underneath. Nice proud chest, keep your wrist neutral. See this little flop of the wrist? Try to keep a nice strong grip and pull outward. Pinkies out first, not Okay, so work that whole forearm and upper back. We're doing 13 of those. Not sure why we picked 13, but that's what it is. And then next up, kettlebell halos. Grabbing a kettlebell with the bottoms up. So this is the bottom, right? Up, and then it's gonna go back and down. Right, try to keep your elbows close to your head and form a big halo around your head in one direction and then in the other direction. What you don't want to do is move your head with the kettlebell. Right? Your head stays neutral and your shoulders are moving around the kettlebell, not the other way around. Got it? Cool. We're doing 12 each, 12 each direction. Okay? Your last exercise is going to be a transverse bridge. Four point stance here, hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. We're gonna rotate our hips and square our feet and hips up. Okay? First, then bridge up. And then come back to center, reset on the other side. And I stop there because a lot of people just kind of rotate this way and then press up. And you see that just doesn't, it just doesn't look right. Right? My foot's out. You wanna be squared up, better structure, get that good stretch in that bridge and then come back to center, reset, and then rinse on the other side. We're doing five each of those, 15 minutes. Any questions? Every suit links up to an exercise. Sometimes you don't get all four exercises in the deal, in the hand, but that's what you gotta do anyway, right? So four exercises, each exercise is linked up to a different suit. I'm going to pull four cards, I'm going to pull four different cards at least four times, meaning you're going to do anywhere from four to five rounds or 21 minutes of work, whatever comes first, okay? <clears throat> so your first exercise, diamonds are lateral raises. So we're going to take a kind of a shoulder position, externally rotate those shoulders and then bring your, your hands up so the 90 degree position is from your wrist, elbow to your shoulder, okay? Lean forward slightly, and then you're basically gonna do a, we call, lateral fly, or a butterfly lateral fly, right? So you're just kinda spreading your wings out. So your hands and wrist and elbows are level with, or parallel with the floor, okay? You don't have to come any, any higher up than that. Cool? So that's gonna rock your shoulders Especially, especially, I was going to say specifically, but especially the middle part of your deltoid here. Folks at home, your heart, heart for you today is going to be a body weight row or a plank row, renegade style, right? So high plank position here, one row, two rows. Think about keeping those hips stable, hips square with the floor, pressing into that bottom hand and creating as much tension in the upper back as possible. Hearts for you guys. Your spade is going to be a feet support. Sit up. So, let's make these work here. 
light, but I'll make it work. Old school reminds me of little young 13 year old Anthony doing sit ups under his bed, feet under the bed. Oh, oh. I, would do, I would do five every night and then add five every night. Wow. Anyway, so keep those feet down, grab a set of dumbbells or something that's going to hold your feet down. You're doing basic old school sit ups for speeds. Okay? Next up, clubs. Clubs are going to be a wall ball, which is going to be basically two exercises in one. It's a front squat with shoulder press. Okay? Keeping your eye on the ball, keeping your elbows on the ball, catching that ball in the squat, right back up. Okay? Building some rhythm with that. Folks at home, if you don't have a wall or a ball, you can do thrusters. today is going to be a farmer's hold. If you have a set of kettlebells, you simply want to pull those shoulder blades back and let them hang down low into your back pocket. Of course you want to squeeze your glutes, tuck that butt underneath and keep that trunk nice and tight, keep your head neutral and you're holding here for 20 seconds after each round. Now if you don't have weights that are heavy enough to give you effort, to give you work, then you can always do a overhead hold. Still, same thing, keeping those wrists directly above the shoulders, squeezing the glutes, keeping that trunk nice and tight, and you're holding this position for 20 seconds. That's it. You don't have heavy enough weight to hold in that far farmer's, in that farmer's hold position. Y'all ready? One, two, all right, here we go. The finisher, 30 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest, five rounds. Doing some Irish get-ups, one exercise, okay? Starting in your kneeling position, here, mid-squat position, right back down with that same leg. So up with the left, up with the right, down with the left, down with the right. Up right, left, right, left. That makes sense? Whatever you come up with, come right back down with that. You never go higher than that mid-squat position. Okay, easy breezy, five rounds, 30 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest. Body weight or within? You can hold weight, absolutely. Irish Skeps, guys, if you wanted to, you can add weight. So you're holding some kind of weight up top, almost like in a goblet squat position, right? Squeeze the elbows in, keep the kettlebell close to your body, and you can continually do your Irish Skeps from here. Obviously, adding that extra weight is going to be a little bit more difficult, a little bit more challenging, but it's only 20, sorry, it's only 30 seconds of work. 15 seconds of rest, your call if you want to add weight or not. Doesn't have to be a kettlebell either, you can just hold something close to your body, keep your chest upright, keep that good strong posture, and finish this workout up. Let's go.